Hey, I'm Seth Johnson with Land a House. This is a hydraulic ram pump. It's a water pump that requires no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing and falling water to push water uphill. So silt and debris is a big issue with the ram pump. If it's uh, big particles, it can stop the pump from operating. If it's small stuff that gets by, it can build up in your storage tank or clog up your irrigation lines. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three different things that I'm doing to help prevent my irrigation lines and storage tank and even the pump here from getting debris stuck in it. Here's a really good example of debris stuck in a pressure tank on top of the ram pump. That, uh, if it gets stuck into the waste valve, can actually clog that up and cause some big problems. I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off by turning the valve on the delivery pipe here. It doesn't quite close all the way because of my block here. Then I'm gonna try and open this valve to let the pressure out. I've traveled up the creek about 150 feet to show you the first stage in my silt reduction process. Be sure to stay to the end of the video so you can watch the third and final step, which I think will be very helpful. This is the intake of my system. It's two three inch PVC pipes with a lot of holes drilled into it and some window screen wrapped around that. Now, this has been in the creek for over a year and I've noticed that the screen is starting to rip and tear on this. So I need to pull this out and replace the screen and I've got some aluminum screen this time that should prevent that from tearing so quickly. So let's go ahead and remove my little makeshift dam here. Let's get some of these leaves off of this intake screen and this should allow us to simply pull this out of the water and access the screen on it so we can get it nice and clean for this season of ram pump use. So hopefully I'll be able to just unscrew this down here from my supply line. Ah, there we go. Good enough. This came right out of that poly pipe. Let's go ahead and pull this over here to the side and get this thing cleaned up. First thing I want to do is get this old screen off of here. I'd use some zip ties to keep this first one in place here. So there's a pretty good bit of rock and junk in that one. Now this other one over here is the older one and it's definitely starting to rip out of there. I brought uh, my socket set to try and get this undone. It looks like that hose clamp was not stainless steel. Not sure that's going to work. Well, this screen wasn't as terrible as I thought it would be, but it is still coming apart a bit. So I'm going to take this down to the creek and get this washed out real quick. I can tell this side over here is pretty heavy, so I may be able to break that loose here or get one of these caps off and uh, drain it. So let me break that free real quick. I managed to get the pieces separated. I'm just going to use this little pool of water here to get all the silt and everything out of there. It's looking pretty good on that piece. Now let's clean out this other side here. Now that it's cleaned out and looking nice, I'm going to put this aluminum screen on here and that should hopefully last a good long time. But I'm just going to wrap these pieces here and stick it under the hose clamps that were already on there and i brought down some more hose clamps to use on this other side uh, since it had those zip ties before and there we have it both of these intake screens are nice and clean and got everything back in the water have my little makeshift dam back up and running here i'm filming this on tuesday it has rained every tuesday for the past uh, three months so let's move on to the next thing uh, before this rain gets any worse. This bucket is the next step in the silt and debris removal process for the ram pump. I have found this system to be very consistent and to work out pretty good. So let me show you what it looks like inside of here. So 
So this is the pipe we were just working with. I call it the supply line. Now the water pressure is low here because we just had it open. So I'm going to pick this up for a second and then set it down quick. And that's going to pull the air out of here and we'll get the full flow rate moving once again. The airlock that was in there is being pulled out. I think that's it. Should be the full flow rate, much improved. Stick that back in there. So the purpose of the bucket is to have an area that can capture silt. So anything from the drive pipe down is just an area that silt can build up in. So if I pull this plug here, we can drain out anything that's in the bottom of the bucket. And it's decently clean right now down in there. So you can see the water isn't too bad. So let's go ahead and plug that back up. Now in my design here, the drive pipe comes out about six inches from the bottom and the top of the bucket, I just have going down into this 90 degree piece here and goes back off towards the creek. Those bubbles are coming out of the drive pipe. It's really important to keep the drive pipe as free of air as possible. That's another reason I use this bucket, is to provide an air-free intake. Okay, you can see the water is now flowing out of there, which means this is full. Go ahead and keep this covered. Now, if you're a fan of the YouTube channel, you've seen those two steps a hundred times. So let me go ahead and get the pump started again, and I'll show you the final uh, screen intake that should help prevent any debris from getting into our irrigation system. I'm back up here where I'm using my water at the garden and I have this power fit garden hose filter. This is the final stage that I'm going to be using here. The screen mesh, I think I got the 100, I'll have to check on that. But this will just go in line with my sprinkling system here and hopefully pull out any debris that would clog up my irrigation system, which I'll show you here in just a bit. So I need to go ahead and pull this off. I kind of fear that I'm going to be getting a bit uh, wet when I do this, but let's go ahead and get this unscrewed here. Here, so that I won't be getting wet when I clean this out. Let's go ahead and just do that here. We'll just use this T as my shutoff, and I'll just have one side hooked up to the filter. I think that'll be just fine. Now it's probably better to have this straight up and down but it's gonna be kind of crooked off to the side with my hose here. We'll just make it happen. And there we have it. That's the final stage here in my ram pump to irrigation filter system. I can already see some particles of junk stuck down here in the bottom. Let's turn this on for a minute and we'll see if it captures a little bit more that would have otherwise gotten stuck in my wobbler so the hole here is pretty small in the wobbler and can get stopped up pretty easily so let's go ahead and crank this up and see if we can catch some debris ah run Whoop. so this was a power fit from amazon I'll have a link to this in the description down below. Where we had just been disturbing the ram pump, this water is now pretty nasty looking. Let's see if we can get this undone. All right. So the screen is still fine there. Let's see what kind of debris is left in the bottom. 
So mostly just some uh, silt that I'm seeing. Nothing too big in this round. But uh, it doesn't take a whole lot to stop up uh, a drip irrigation, as you may know. So this kind of thing right here is very important to keep that system safe. Now, if you don't have a lot of rain in your area and your creek has not flooded, then you may not have an issue with this. Um, but here in my area, we get rain a lot and uh, it will disturb the creek enough that debris gets into this line really easy. I hope you've enjoyed this ram pump video. Keeping the silt and debris out of the system is very important, especially when you're using irrigation like this. Before I had that screen installed, I ran this a couple times, and a simple leaf is enough to clog this small hole here. I'll be testing this out over the summer, and I'm sure I'll do a follow-up video to let you know how well it has worked. Uh, if you are interested in the ram pump, I have four different sizes available at landhouse.com, amazon.com, and ebay.com. So if you want to check those out, links in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, and be sure you're subscribed and ring that notification bell. Also, check out this video here for more content.